Hi everyone. This week we're doing a bit more applique. Uh, this time I'm making a little baby quilt. We have a new addition to our extended family, um, Georgiana Maria. What a beautiful name. So let's get cracking. The first step is to print out and cut the template. The link for this can be found in the description below. Once you have it cut out, have a think about the fabrics you want to use. I'm using this adorable Peter Rabbit fabric. You can go ahead uh, and use the same fabric for all the appliques or mix it off and use lots of different ones. I'll link to the ones I'm using in the description. Um, for the hearts you'll need 12, assuming you're working to the same size as I am, um, which creates a finished quilt around 40 by 40 inches, maybe slightly smaller. Um, if you want to be able to see the parts of the fabric that you're going to be cutting, um, template plastic works brilliantly. This is what I've used for my template. Again, I'll link to this in the description. Um, also, as I'm using this on the top of the fabric instead of the back, I'm using a heat erasable pen. My sewing machine has a an embroidery function, so I went ahead and created one of the hearts with a, a little personalisation beforehand. If yours doesn't have this kind of function, but you want to add personalisation, maybe consider cutting out letters and appliquing them to, well, either directly to the quilt or onto one of the hearts. So the first step is to iron fuser web uh, to the backing of the applique fabrics. Leave the paper in place and use an up down motion to apply the fuser web. Don't run the iron over it as you normally would. Um, this, this is basically just to avoid bumps and creases being created. Once you have fuser web applied to the back of all your fabrics, place your templates onto the paper side of the fabric face down and draw around them. Obviously, as I said, I'm not doing that. Um, if you're wanting to use a specific area, so to get a specific part of the fabric onto the heart, you need to work from the top. using something semi-transparent um, means that you can mark the top of the paper uh, mark the top instead of the paper side but again be sure to use a heat erasable pen if you do this Carefully cut out all your pieces. Obviously I'm just doing one heart here to show you my method. Um, make sure your scissors are sharp. You'll get a nice clean cut on the fabric edges at, um, as long as your scissors are, are sharp. Right, I'll pop off and get the other hearts ready so we can move forward. All the hearts are cut and ready to apply to the main fabric. Uh, I'm just using our standard texture blender in cream for this one. Um, I love that fabric. You'll have seen me use it in so many videos. Um, you probably just automatically recognise it by this point. I've laid out the hearts to figure out where I want to place them and then piled them up in order to make this a bit easier. 
Take your main fabric and place it on your ironing board, right side facing up. Measure 7 inches over from the top left corner and then 4 inches down. This is the point you need to place the top centre point of the first heart. Sorry, that was all off camera. Um, I really need to be more careful. So, over 7 inches from the top left. Then from that mark, 4 inches down. Um, I make that 4 inches mark a dot and then add a line a bit further down. This will allow you to line up the top centre point and the bottom centre point so that you have your heart sitting straight. Peel off the backing paper and iron in place. Once ironed, measure from the bottom point over to 13 inches. This is where the bottom point of the second heart should sit. Make sure it's straight and iron in place. Using a ruler at the edge of both the top and bottom points of that first heart, draw a line so you can use that to align the next row. Now measure down from the bottom point of the first heart and add a dot. This is where the top point um, of row 2 starts. Continue this until you've got all your hearts ironed down. Here's a photograph of the quilt up to this point. Next is sewing, but because I want the stitching to be visible on the back and front, I'm going to make up my quilt sandwich now. Lay out the backing fabric right side down on your ironing board and give it a quick run over with the iron if it needs it. Thank you. 
add the wadding. As you can see, my wadding wasn't big enough. Um, I simply put two pieces together and ran them through the sewing machine using a wide zigzag stitch. Um, I did this in green thread so you could see what I'd done. Add the quilt top, uh, this side, right side facing up. Give it another run over with the iron. Then start adding pins through all three layers. Um, I like doing this on the ironing board as I can poke a load of pins in and go through and close them up afterwards without risking the uh, fabric shifting. It does take a while, but every pin that you add means less movement in the quilt when it comes to sewing. Um, also, these curved quilters pins are great. They make this so much easier. So I'll go ahead and pin the rest of this off camera and then bring you back. Set the stitch length you want to use on your, uh, sorry, set the stitch you want to use on your machine. Uh, I'm using this one. Start as close to the middle as you can. Carefully sew around all the pieces. I'm using a white thread, um, but there's nothing stopping you using a contrasting thread if you really want to see the stitches. So I'm going to stop the video and go off and attach the other hearts off camera, then I'll be back. Now that the appliques are all secured in place, it's time to think about quilting the background. When you get to this step, really, really think about what you want to do before you start. Free motion quilting is a good option, but whatever you do, I'd suggest using a heat erasable pen to actually draw your design onto the quilt beforehand. Then step back and see if you're happy with it before committing. Um, for this one, I'm going to add a few hearts in the empty space. I think that will be enough. So I'm using a heat erasable pen to draw them first. That way I have a line to follow.
For these I'm using a standard straight stitch um, and a stitch length of 3.5 millimetres. So I need to go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the quilt. Then I'll come back, but let's have a quick peek at what the back of the quilt looks like at the moment. Lovely. I'll go ahead and quilt the rest, then um, trim off the quilt edges so they're all straight and we'll come back and get to the binding process. Loving it so far. Um, just the binding to do now. So for this you'll need to cut strips of 2.5 inches by the width of the fabric. So in my case 2.5 by 44 inches. Measure your quilt to get the correct amount. Uh, I generally create 8 strips for this size of quilt but always always have a, a lot left over six should be enough um go seven just to be sure place one of the strips right side up uh, i'm going to mark this up uh, sorry i'm going to mark up this first one uh, in the hope that it explains things a bit better than i can verbalize The two fabrics um, should have their right sides facing at this point. So you're going to sew from the inner top to the outer bottom corner. You don't need to mark these up. Um, as I say, I'm just doing it so that you can see properly what I'm doing. Um, hopefully this does show it clearly enough. Once that's sewn, trim the excess fabric on the back down to a quarter inch. Continue this process until all the strips are attached to one another. Now take the pile of fabric strips to your ironing board. Starting at one end, fold the fabric in half with the wrong sides together and press. You'll need to do the entire strip. Um, I'll save you having to watch all that and jump forward.
So the binding's all made. Now I need to attach it to the quilt. We're working on the back of the quilt here. You'll need a 12 inch tail to work with at the end, so start about 12 inches down the piece of binding. When you get to the other end, um, you'll also need to leave another 12 inches um, loose there. Um, this will become clear. Set your stitch length to 2.5 and sew quarter inch away from the edge. The raw edge of the binding sits against the raw edge of the quilt. If you've left any pins in the quilt, remove them um, so that you don't sew over them by accident. It drives me absolutely batty watching people sew over pins. So sew down to your first corner, um, but before you get there, stop. We need to fold over the corner and flip the connecting side over to create a mitre uh, when we get to the stitch in the front, um, which takes a little bit of prep work on this back side. So stop at a quarter inch and pivot the fabric so that you sew um, into the corner, you sew a diagonal into the corner edge. Remove it from the machine, then fold the tail end back up over where you just stitched and then bring it down on itself. Start sewing at a quarter inch and continue down to your next corner using the same method to get around that and subsequent corners. Now the uh, binding is attached, we're left with two tails. You'll need a little bit of excess binding to complete this.
First, mark about halfway between the two tails on your quilt. Lay one of the tails flat against the edge, then pop that excess you cut on top of it so that the centre fold is, in, is uh, in line with the line you marked. Mark a line on the binding, on the loose side, not on the side that's attached. Repeat on the other tail, again on the loose side. Then trim the two pieces down to that line. This next bit is a bit easier if the uh, quilt is folded up a little. Open up one tail so that the right side of the fabric is facing you. Then open up the other one and lay that right side down. You can pop in pins here to stop them moving around. And now we're going to sew inner corner to bottom outer corner. Take out the pins and pull the binding flat to ensure it's the correct size. And now you can trim that excess down to a quarter inch again and then sew the binding down just as you were doing. Now that's attached to the back, we're going to flip it over and attach it to the front. Um, I always start in a corner. So uh, flip the binding over. Don't be tempted to cut this, uh, well, what looks like excess, 
um, you'll leave yourself with a hole in the quilt if you do that. So flip over um, one edge to the front. It'll create a point as it sits over the edge of the um, quilt at this point. Carefully fold that point and the joining edge over. This point will sit against the edge of the previous side and create a lovely mitered corner. Oh, I feel like I'm saying corner a lot. Um, uh, sew close to the edge of the binding to secure it in place. Stop and lift the foot up when you get to right to the corner. Your needle should still be down. If your machine automatically lifts it, and I know some do, um, use the hand wheel to move it back down through the fabric layers. Having the needle down means you won't accidentally move the quilt. And pivot, and continue sewing. Slowly move around the entire quilt using the same method for all four corners until it's all lovely and bound. Let me show, let me slow it down here and close up close up on um, that area so you can see it better. Um, so it's right side over and flatten to a point, and then bottom up so that that point meets the other side. I'm not sure if I'm being clear in verbalising this, but hopefully you like me and learn from watching better than listening. Anyway, hopefully you get the idea. So here's a photograph of the fully bound quilt. And one final thing before I leave you to your day. Welcome to the world, Georgiana Maria. So, so beautiful. I hope you like the video. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing, liking, or even sharing the video. Until next time, happy sewing.